Hey there, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking here at a Japanese camper. This one is an Isuzu Elf 250. This is a rear wheel drive version, but you can get these in four wheel drive. This is a post purchase inspection video for the camper. We bought this from Japanese auctions uh, for exporting to the USA under the 25 year rule. Now, although this is a truck chassis, it will not be imported under the 25% tax, but because it is a passenger vehicle, obviously not a commercial vehicle. It's a 4.3 liter diesel engine, which is very good because a lot of these Japanese campers will run a much smaller engine, like a 2.7 or a three liter turbo diesel. Uh, this one here with the larger engine, even though it's just a four cylinder, the 4.3 liter will give it a lot more power for higher speeds that you'll see on American highways. Okay, so we'll take a look at the exterior, interior as well. A lot of people are interested in the interior of these. Uh, usually somebody puts a timestamp in the comments. If you do that, you get a thumbs up. And uh, before we really get into it, I, ha I have to say, we get an awful lot of uh, inquiries for these. And so here's a disclaimer before you <laughs> quickly get to your keyboard and start sending us an email. Most of the people who want one of these don't end up buying one because you have to buy them from the auctions completely sight unseen you don't we don't get to see the vehicles we get to go off of what's on the auction inspection sheet which i'll translate for you consider that when you're thinking about maybe buying one of these because um that's all the information that you get on it and some of them can be pretty gross uh the rule of thumb though is if you buy a more expensive one this is about a mid expensiveness one if you buy a more expensive one you're more likely to get a good camper if you buy a lower grade one you're more likely to get a bad camper so I don't want to have anyone sad. Um, so make sure you think about that. Uh, send us an email if you want questions answered. Uh, this plate, I just have to mention, the previous owner had this for at least 20 years because we, we don't have plates in Japan that look like this anymore. All of our plates have three digits here instead of two. They stopped the two digits in 1999. So kind of a little interesting piece of trivia. Okay, so here's the auction inspection sheet. There's a lot of information on our website on how to read or understand these. Of course, you can't read the Japanese, so I'm gonna translate that for you. So it's a 95 Elf camping, 4.3 liter, auction read 3.5 with an interior B, power steering, power windows. Now it comes with a generator. Now I don't know an awful lot about the ones that come with generators. It is somewhat of a rare option. And I'm just gonna show you this before I go to the rest of the translating. Gener generator here has been 54 hours. There's a start and stop switch, and that's really all I know. I don't know the amount of wattages for the generator. I know the electrical system in it goes to 12, 1200 watts, because I saw that somewhere. Looks like we're getting a Delica. Hi. So I'll probably in the middle of this video have to sign for that. Um, okay, 42,800 kilometers. There is a little bit of a note here on the mileage. Very uncommon for these to have changed mileage, or uh, changed odometers, but this one does. In 2015, the camper had 30,000 kilometers on it. The gauges were changed by the dealer with history papers. Right now it has just 12,000 kilometers on the odometer, but that's not correct. And so you do have to watch out for these, if they, especially ones that are already landed in the States, because if this one lands in the States, maybe a dealer is going to just pretend that this one has 12,000 original kilometers. That's one of the biggest ways that you'll find unknown mileage on these is if the odometer has been changed and the selling dealer thinks, oh, I'm going to be a little bit sneaky. I'm going to pretend it's 12,000 kilometers. Yeah, so really it's 42 because you add the two together. Comes with a spare key. It is a camping car, comes with a camping manual. The body is, is pretty good. There's some repainted sections. There's a W3 here, which means a wavy panel some crack on the back, some scratches here as well. I'll show you more of that in a second. Carpet is dirty, underside surface rust and painted, interior scratched and dirty, camping section scratched and paint faded. That's the exterior, various scratches and dents. Now they don't actually test any of the camping equipment. So that's a kind of, kind of can be a big problem. And then uh, it has a gas burner, toilet, um, a range, table, bed. This one actually is a four bed model, uh, fridge, and um, the reverse camera rear heater. Okay, so I'll do a quick once around so you can see it from every angle. This one you can easily stand up inside. Most of the ones of this style, you can stand up inside pretty easily. Um, I think up to about six foot two maybe, you can stand up completely in this one. It has dually rear wheels, and so they're tiny. They're only uh, 14 inch wheels. 
and so that gives you a big stand-up area and there's actually no cutouts inside the camper it's completely flat all the way through the four bed model has two bunk beds in the back they're really long but they're not very wide and so mostly just for kids kind of thing um, I did measure it it's 182 centimeters long for the bed and so if you're 5'10 like I am that's no problem unless you like to sleep with your legs curled up like I do in which case you don't really have enough room for that kids obviously would definitely have enough room and then there's a bed up here and the table section converts into a bed as well the camper's so big I have to walk all the way around the tree I once saw a spider that was like a quarter the size of the manhole cover it was giant and it scared me so badly. I took a video of it, but then it died because the pavement was too hot and I didn't want to post a video of a spider dying on YouTube. Okay, Isuzu makes uh, industrial trucks worldwide. They're super reliable, but the engines aren't that, that fast. And so Japanese highways are like max 80 or 100 kilometers an hour. It's much slower. So here's the wavy section. You can see there. I think it may have had a repair at some point. That's why it's wavy. Okay, also have some scratches here. Crack there. That Delica sounds like it's having trouble starting. And then scratches here. That's what they considered an A2. A decent amount of windows on it. Probably about average. The inside is fairly light, even though the windows are tinted. I wonder if he'll need my help. It's unfortunate timing, but he didn't tell me he was coming, so. I started the video and as soon as I started, surprise, you got a Delica. Uh, here's something really cool about these campers. Because they're made for like the Japanese market and other markets, you can turn these wheels so far and you can turn really, really sharply in these, which is extra useful when it's such a big, well, by American standards, not very big, but in Japan, this is a large vehicle. The doors also open super wide, as you can see, like a full right angle. Okay, so this one's an automatic transmission. You can get them in manual as well, of course. It has climate control AC and that works. Power steering works. Throttle is no problem. This is a toll collection box. That's what they look like, in case you've ever wondered. Okay, it needs to be cleaned in the carpet area. The engine is underneath here. 4.3 liter four cylinder. I thought it was gonna be a five or six cylinder, but uh, 4.3 four cylinder. Okay, that's all pretty normal stuff. It's a reverse camera there. And the rest is all pretty normal. There's a power inverter as well, because the electrical system on these trucks uses 24 volt, whereas... Oh, hi. Oh, hi. 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 Uh, Japanese lesson for you there. Okay, so going into the back section. Oh, we have side awning and Carefree of Colorado, which is kind of fun. Here's, here's something fun too. Check it out. Neo Caprice. Six people can stay. Not seven, six. Six people can stay. Okay, so a bug screen, you can open this up if you want. You can close that so that the bugs don't get inside. And you have a window there coming in. Pretty easy to come in. I'll just show you here. You have a four people's dining area here. So the six people can stay, but only four get to eat at a time. Really uh, pretty large bed up there. A pass through to the driver's section, which is pretty cool. Six people will be six seat belts in this. Some of them are more, some of them are less. Here's, uh, you get to see me with my unhaircut. That's like uh, 10 inches or so between me and the top. So, yeah, very cool. Peeling uh, headliner there. There's a crack in the glass there. I guess the inspector didn't catch that because those curtains were closed. Okay, this turns into a bed if you want. I think this side section there goes down, down here, but I didn't actually try it. A kitchen that you can actually cook in, which is good. 
sink, two burners, we'll have a water pump, water heater, microwave, fridge, okay, and two beds here. And yeah, 182 centimeters from that wall to that wall, uh, probably only about 60 centimeters from here to here. And if you don't know centimeters, I recommend that you learn them like the rest of the world. I'm sorry, I come from Canada and it's really weird in Canada too because uh, we use both. Centimeters, pounds, ounces, grams, we use them all. It's really frustrating. Okay, so let's have a drawer opening party. Oh, let me show you the toilet first. This guy. And then there's a shower in here too, but the shower head's missing. It's supposed to go from there to up there. Okay, toilet paper roll. There's a plug down there. I guess you can have a mini bath. That'd be fun. Okay. Now let's open drawers. So, microwave. Oh, pretty tiny. Japanese microwaves are also ovens, so it probably has a convection oven section on it too. That's all just equipment, like your rear heater. A place for your things. Two outlets there. There's a Venetian style blind there. These are pretty big actually. That's great. And another pretty big one. Okay, audio is speakers here. Add zest. These are big as well. That other one's going to be exactly the same. It's going to want a signature now. Yeah, we actually ran out of batteries there. Anyway, th this table from this angle, you can see it's like a quick release. You just like delatch that and then it goes directly down. And then after that, you can uh, set your things, your cushions and all of that to turn that into a bed, which is really nice because if you have to fumble with a bed when it's time to go to bed, that can be pretty annoying. Up here, I'll just jump up there to show you how big that it is. And you're going to have the same like one, uh, 182 centimeters from there to here. And I'm just going to measure with my body from there to here is uh, eh, about that long. So you have to sleep sideways. I think it's uh, six Japanese people can stay. I think depending on the size of you, you will uh, fit into of the beds well like I do or you may want a bigger bed. The funny thing is a lot of American campers make their way, their way to Japan here and so um, you can actually buy and some some of our customers do buy American campers here and then send them to the US to sell them. I guess you can get them for a lower price. What's this? That's just a box. Hmm. Curtain rod here there's some damage on here. There's a screw hole. There's a little bit of the uh, wallpaper going away there. A little bit of damage to the edge of the counter. There's a closet. It has a rack for your coats or whatever. And here's your heater thermostat. Just set the temperature and you're good to go. Okay. And there is power converter. And it looks like uh, cigarette lighter adapters there. And probably TV hookups, that's what this looks like. Okay. Uh, so that is your everything for this camper. So it looks like because I shot two videos, I get to do a little bit of uh, editing when we get back to the office. That's always fun. But um, yeah, there you go. Japanese camper, Zuzu Elf 250, if you are interested. And if you made it all the way to this part of the video, don't forget the part there where I'm talking about you have to buy them sight unseen because, yeah, we get a lot of people emailing and then as soon as we tell them that, then we never hear from them again. So you can save yourself a step if you... Uh, and we will be putting something on the website pretty soon about these because we get so many inquiries, like uh, kind of a guide how to buy them. Anyways, that's what we have there. So if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much and have a nice day.